Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Mathilde. I'm the manager of marketing here at Amity, where we provide customer success managers with a platform uh, that they can use to retain and grow their customers at scale. So thanks, everyone, so much for joining us live today. We're super excited about the webinar. Uh, we're tackling the issue of QBRs and specifically how they can drive customers' accountability. And uh, I'm sure a lot of you are already familiar with our guest speaker today. Irit Ezips uh, is a pretty big deal in customer success, and she's the CEO of CSM Practice, uh, a consulting firm working with some of the best CSM teams in the space. Um, so we're super excited to have her today to speak about this really popular topic. Um, and we are actually joined by another guest presenter today, Christy Augustine, is the CCO of Bloomreach. And uh, although she's not on the slide right here, unfortunately, she is with Irit today and she will be sharing some really awesome tips with all of us today. So I hope everyone is excited. Um, I know we all want to get to the presentation, but before we do so, a couple of small housekeeping notes uh, to share with everyone. As usual, we are on Twitter, so join us using the hashtag CSWebinar, um, tag us at GetAmity, uh, Eerie Ezips, and CSM Practice as well. We'd love to engage with you, uh, retweet your screen grabs, um, and just engage with you throughout the presentation and afterwards. Um, we are recording this session, and uh, we will be sending a replay link as well as the slides to uh, everyone who's registered for today. So keep an eye on your inbox uh, before the weekend and you'll get a note from me with all of that in there. Um, and uh, of course, we are doing a Q&A uh, at the end of the webinar. So at any point, open your uh, Q&A panel in Zoom and you can send us your questions. We also encourage everyone to be active in the chat during the webinar as well. And uh, we're excited to answer all of your questions. So for anyone joining us for the very first time this week, uh, Amity, to give you a little bit of context, provides a customer success management software that um, does things like health scoring, uh, tracking engagements, automating emails, um, analytics, and such things that you need as a customer success manager. Um, so our customers actually use Amity to track outcome metrics and pull reports specifically for the QBRs. So if you are interested in learning more um, about what that looks like, do request a demo online or let me know and I would be happy to arrange that for you as well. And so I hope this gives you some context around why we're here today, uh, but that's all you're going to hear about Amity um, for today's session because we're super excited to introduce uh, our awesome presenters today. So Irit, uh, Christy, thank you so much for joining us today. We are all super excited and uh, I'm gonna hand things over to you now. Thanks, Mathilde. Good morning, everyone. Irit Ezips here from CSM Practice. Super excited to be here this morning and share with you some of the advanced QBR playbooks that my customers and I are developing and implementing uh, with their teams to create more accountable customers so that you can drive value faster and at a better pace. Um, for those who, of you who do not know me, I have been in the customer success space and been doing uh, you know, writing blogs and participating in various conferences in the past few years. I am the founder and CEO of CSM Practice, a boutique consulting firm that helps customer success teams better define their strategy as well as execute it using customer success operation systems and other tools. There is a problem, as you know, otherwise some of you would not have subscribed or attended this morning with QBRs. We sit down with the client, we have an amazing meeting with them, they're very engaged, we talk about everything that's going on, but then at the end of the day, <clears throat> the client just doesn't seem to get it. They don't seem to make real true progress towards their uh, desired outcome. So what is missing here? And I listened to Successly's video, but for those of you who don't track Successly live, I highly encourage you to 
uh, take a look at some of their podcasts and YouTube videos. And recently they interviewed Greg Danes, CEO of Client Velocity, who said something that I truly identify with. And he said, your technology produces no value unless your customer changes the way they work. In other words, the value that uh, we bring to the table can only be fathomed if the client actually takes active steps in embracing what your solution is all about. And a lot of times that means various things that they need to change on their end in order to be able to consume that value. So we'll talk about that and exactly how can we communicate to clients uh, what is it that they need to change in their the way they work in order to really embrace everything that our solution can bring about? So you're right now, if you're you're in the right session, <clears throat> if you want to understand how to help clients make those changes that they need to make in their own organization, their own processes, their own teams, in order to maximize value from your technology or services. You're in the right session if you want to drive your clients to become more accountable for their own success. It's always nicer to dance tango with another partner, if you know what I mean. And then if you want to get concrete advice, meaning you want to see how this looks like, samples of templates that we use with clients, examples of step-by-step -step approach to develop these tools, stick around. We have Christy here who's gonna show you exactly how those specific tools and advanced QBR tables, uh, sorry, <laughs> advanced QBR playbooks look like that you could use in your own QBR sessions to drive higher value faster for your clients by effectively driving client accountability. So if you think about client accountability, I think it's really the missing piece for your QBR reviews. You know, sometimes we just do everything that we can. We offer training, we tell them what needs to be done. We offer some different uh, advice on things that they can do with the system, but still, you know, nothing is really happening or it happens, but very, very slowly. It's really hard to get the client to adopt uh, these new features. So. At some point, what we need to be doing is be very, very clear with our clients as to what they need to do. What is their piece of accountability and um, their responsibility for their own success? And in, we need to do that in a really clear way. And today you're in luck because we're going to show you how does that look like being clear with clients. And so what I mean by that is that we need to be very realistic with our customers. And we need to tell them exactly what do we expect from them as part of that journey to arriving to those desired outcomes. And that's called customer accountability. And I, I, again, I would submit to you that this is the missing piece from quarterly business reviews because I do have a number of clients and every time I talk to them about that, some of them don't do it or they don't do it enough. So the first thing that you need to think about is being explicit with your clients and creating a cookbook, a roadmap that's very explicit around what kind of outcomes they can have and how and what is the roadmap that they and you need to take together in order to accomplish them. And I'll pause a second here for a question. Do we have a question, um, Mathilde? Yes, we do have a question actually. Um, Question here is, how do you see the message of change being integrated into the sales cycle um, so that the customer understands um, and is committed to their ownership of the change component before they purchase your technology? I think, I think that the playbooks that we're going to share today would be applicable to the sales process as well, but I'd be happy to double click on that. If, if, if we don't answer that question by the end of the webinar, then I'd be happy to double click on that as soon as we finish demonstrating the playbooks today. But really good question. Awesome. So just to dial in on the cookbook, the cookbook is a roadmap and it's a visual tool that you should embed in your QBR sessions. And it's all about building a recipe for success, a clear step-by-step -step roadmap for your clients that illustrate what does it mean to be best of breed customer. 
And, you know, at CSM practice, we also um, work with our clients in order to, for example, optimize their customer success operations. And we too develop maturity scores. And so that's to work with our clients to help them illustrate and understand where they stand in the process of becoming best of breed client. And so this is an example of one of the tools that we're using. And I'd like to encourage you as well to first and foremost, create a visual map for your clients to better understand how do they fare against other clients. So your first QBR advanced playbook is a scoring model. Let your client know exactly how they fare against the others. And the key to a maturity score is to promote awareness around where do they stand in terms of internal processes. So one of your expectation is, is their in, internal processes is, are going to get better. And so what, by creating a scoring model, we're actually illustrating what in the processes should be better. You want to create that clearance with your customers, but that is not enough. We also expect resources alignment to be different, whether it, whether it means that the team is structured differently or you have a full commitment from the executive sponsor. And sometimes we have the executive sponsor, you know, signing off on the, on the PO for, to, to extend the renewal. But what we really want is a sponsor that is fully engaged, that meets with us, that has a clear vision, not just for the short term, but for the long term. And I will submit to you that a maturity score that has that embedded as one of the line items is important because then they understand that if they don't have that and they're not as involved, they're exactly hindering their opportunity to get maximum value with you. And then finally, of course, there could be other things like training. Are they, you know, including training as part of their new onboarding process? You know, are they taking training on a regular basis? Are they signed up to your newsletter to understand training or new training opportunities? So all of those, even though they're not directly related to features, as you could see, they're actually directed to what should the client be doing in order to get maximum value from you. Overall, this kind of map and maturity score should allow your client to build a short-term and a long-term vision with you and then say, okay, this is where we are. It could be the yellow triangles, for example, and this is where we think we could be by the end of the year and then start working with you during the QBR session now that we painted the picture of where we want to be um, to say, what are the next steps for this year that we wanted to take in order to get to that orange dot? And that is the beginning of a conversation of a very productive success plan and an enrolling conversation to get the resources you need from the client and the commitment you need from the client in order to get to that point in the scoring model and effectively execute the success plan. So I'll open it up to, to questions if we have any. We do have a great uh, small question right here. When you're talking about long-term and customer success and specifically here long-term vision, what exactly is your definition of long-term? Okay, so let's start with a short-term. Short-term is something that I can build a success plan and I think it can effectively execute it within, either within three months or a year. When I speak about long-term, it means that Look, we, you might not be ready for it now. We might not have enough bandwidth, resources, funds to execute on this entire vision right now, but this might take us even a few years to execute on it. However, even if I don't achieve this entire value or vision immediately, I do see how my company can grow with your solution. And this is very important. That's why I have long-term versus short-term. Short-term could be first value deliver or a value deliver. But the long-term vision means that this vision goes way past our renewal point. I'll repeat that. The vision goes past the renewal point. So I'll submit to you that if an executive understands the vision that goes beyond the renewal point, then there's less likelihood of them churning. 
because now they're invested for multiple years and multiple renewal periods and they know that this is a journey that they're going to take with you and then things are going to change as their company grows and expands. Awesome. Great. We have some great reactions in the chat. Um, I'll save some of the other questions for the end as well. So maybe we can keep going. Okay. So this is playbook number one, a scoring model. And again, this is a great this, you know, um, conversation starter with your executives and teams to create an enrollment conversation as to where they are now, how do they benchmark against other customers, and where do they want to be and then from there, you can start talking specifically about how a success plan would look like or short-term goals with your clients. So what is the second playbook? That's the business outcome roadmap. See, sometimes the scoring model can tell them what are they not effectively doing with you that they should in terms of resources, processes, and overall vision. However, sometimes we actually need to tell them what they don't know that they don't know. What does that mean? We have access as customer success managers to many other clients, and we could tell if there's other use cases that clients can achieve with you that they have not even considered yet because they just didn't think about it or they didn't even know that your application can assist with that. So the first thing that I would recommend doing is it's kind of like opening the buffet. <laughs> okay, make a list of the top business outcomes your clients can achieve with you. And that's a great you know, conversation starter. What are your uh, outcomes for the years? What are your goals and objectives for the year, Mr. Customer? And the slide should show different main objectives that you can help businesses achieve and the client can take a look at that and say, well, this resonates with me or that, or this is a high priority, and this is a really interesting one. Tell me more about that. But it creates a discussion and potentially helps you increase value in a way that the client didn't tell you, but you sort of like opened the door for them. So this, this particular playbook is designed not necessarily to immediately increase realized and proven value, but it is there to do two things. One, increase perception of value. So even if I don't have the resource to implement all these different outcomes, now as a customer, I'm better educated around what are the outcomes that I could potentially achieve with you. And it's at top of my mind. I, I can constantly think about it. And as I come across a business challenge, I'll know that you have mentioned in the past that you could potentially help with that and I'll double click on it at the appropriate moment. But it's a great discussion starter. And I would submit to you that be very specific about how can you achieve those business outcomes. It might be that you're gonna use different objectives in order to support that outcome. It might not be a very simple thing. It might be a complex process and many things that we need to change with the client and with the system in order to arrive to it. And you might have a different buffet <laughs> that you might open for different industries or different client cycles. So if a client is at a life cycle or they're still a startup, the outcomes that you might offer those kind of clients is different than a very established enterprise client. So when you think about the outcomes that you could help clients with, you want to think about it, first of all, from the best of breed customers, what kind of like best use cases have you seen? And then once you have experimented with that, try to create different flavors of it for different industries and different client life cycles. Um, you know, this is a great step-by-step -step approach to accomplish this uh, this goal. So not only we share the outcomes, we share different objectives that they can have in order to achieve that outcome, but then you want to also say, okay, if you want this outcome or this objective, here's a playbook, a step-by-step -step approach in order to, uh, to get to that result, Mr. Customer. So not only do we want to open the buffet and show different outcomes, we then want to double click and say, here's what you need to do in order to get there. And that would include processes that they need to change, team resources that your client might need to hire or outsource or dedicate otherwise, training that they should be considering, or anything else that you see the best of breed customers do in order to 
uh, get that outcome um, created for them. So you want to take a look at what did your best clients did or what did your best client do to achieve to that outcome and regurgitate that to your client uh, in a very visual manner. Do we have any specific questions, Mathilde, that you wanted to, to address? Um, sure, we do have uh, a lot of questions, so that's awesome. Maybe one for right now, um, a great one would be, what would be your response to a customer um, who says, I have no resources to work on this right now. I want to shift the entire project by six months um, right at the beginning of onboarding. Okay, what so you recommend? Christy, I think, has the answer because <laughs> she's giggling here. I know she had that happen to her. Um, Christy, do, do you want to take that away? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, that rarely happens here at Bloom Rage. No, um, I'm kidding. Yeah, there, I mean, there are a lot of customers, especially, I mean, our, our software is big data optimization. So, you know, they're looking for that solution that's not going to require a lot of resourcing on their side. So I think... Um, what we typically do that's important is to lay out with the customer what we think is necessary. They'll come back with, I don't know if I have the resources for that, and we can scale back. But we're probably also going to scale back how quickly we're going to get to that roadmap. So it is, it is a give and take. You obviously don't want to lose the sales cycle. You don't want to lose the engagement with the customer because you've set such a high bar for them to work with you that they need to be in weekly meetings um, with a full team. So it's really about kind of phasing and pulling what levers you can. Totally understand you guys are busy. I think you'll see in the maturity model I'm gonna share that there are certain elements of it that are very much meant to be product driven. That the more you feed in, the more the product's gonna do and we're gonna let the product do that. And it doesn't necessarily mean that your team needs to answer all these questions. But there are other elements where your team does need to be engaged at a particular cadence. I hope that, I hope that helps. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for your answer. All right. So with that, this is a great um, segue to our next segment of this webinar where I reel Christy in to answer all the top questions that I had for her since she went through this process of creating these playbooks, implementing them for her team. Christy is the chief customer officer at Bloomreach. Uh, she's one of the smartest people I know. Uh, she has great experience working at uh, Baines Capital. She's a very, very smart lady. I'm really excited to have her here. And with that, Christy, your first question, when did your team start using a maturity model and success plans? And I'm going to start the video, guys, so that you can see that we are actually real. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, so we started using a maturity model uh, last year, which you know, could be a little late, I would say, for some customer success organizations. But there are a couple of key tenants or precursors, I would say, you need to have in place. Obviously, this webinar is called Advanced QBRs. So you definitely want to have your foundation in place for everything from your renewal playbook to maybe your pilot playbook, if you guys are doing three-month pilots, one-month pilots with your customers. You want all that to be in place. You potentially even want your system in place so that you're tracking some KBIs by customers, you know what your temperatures are like. That all, I think, is, is necessary. Second, I think you need to have enough customers who have been on board, seen that first value you mentioned, mm -hmm. and are looking for what comes next. And you need a set of products that you know what the roadmap's gonna look like, that you can set that vision for your customer, that they can engage with, here are some things I'm not using from your product that I can see coming. So I think there are a couple of things that need to be in place before you really kind of roll out a maturity model, success plans, incorporate them in your QBRs. That's great. So really three things, you need to have the product, being mature enough, you have to have customers that have already done the first value delivered, and then you need to have the CSM team being in an operation, you have enough team members to make it worth the while and have maybe the basics of QBRs already nailed down before you go into these advanced QBR playbooks. Did I summarize it? Yeah, yeah? absolutely. Okay, good. All right, so I hope I didn't um, overachieve here with this. Here we go. 
All right, so your next question, thinking about the maturity model, could you share an example of a maturity model that you and your team are currently using? And can you walk us through some of the thought process of creating one? Yeah, I mean, um, so this is this is a real life example. I'm, I'm sure that's why a lot of people joined. Steal away um, at this. But this is an example for one of our products in one vertical. Our goal at Bloomreach, we use our big data optimization really to bring the best digital experiences to our customers. So that is gonna vary for you by industry. Your customers are gonna to wanna to achieve different things. Your retail companies are gonna to wanna to achieve best in class conversion rates. And your financial services are gonna potentially want people to be reading a lot of content or engaging and generating leads. So you need to think about those outcomes, and I think you'll see that in the success plan later. But when we tried to come up with this maturity model and start thinking about the different products, the different industries in particular, we tried to look at it holistically from technology, the organization, um, and really lay out what would be the beginning of that all the way to what are some of the customers we see best in class or what would our thought leadership indicate if you were using our product to its fullest advantage, what's that best in class look like? Um, we spent some time iterating on this with our product management team. We iterated on it by, by really taking some of our customers and mapping them against this and saying, you know, did we just come up with a maturity model where everyone's best in class or did we put, come up with a maturity model where everyone's at, at initial start? That's also not very inspiring um, for every one of your customers to kind of look and say, wow, I really, I, I've deployed your product and I'm still at, at stage number one. So I think you really do want to take those customer examples and kind of map them out and, and see where you've ended up. Um, and then, you know, obviously we, we worked with Arit to get some examples of, you know, what could we be missing? It's great to spend all your time in the company and trying to figure out what that maturity model is, but you also want to pressure test it against, you know, what other companies maybe have seen, what could I be missing um, with this? And, and that can include, you know, we worked with CSM practice, but also it can include, you know, pressure testing with your customers mm -hmm. or other people you know in your network. Excellent. So here's the next question uh, about the maturity model. What are the main benefits that you see that your CSMs can actually gain by using maturity model during QBR sessions? And I know you already test pressure this, so this could be, you know, what are some of the things that you have seen that, uh, you know, came about after QBR sessions with and without using a maturity model? Yeah, I think that uh, there are a couple things that the maturity model allows you to do. I mean, one, they're just way more fun to talk about mm -hmm. with your customers, right? Instead of going into your QBR and talking about the number of support tickets that were filed in the last month, um, you know, where we are at with a particular deployment, setting that vision and that inspiration for the customer is a lot more fun to talk about. It's probably one of the reasons they've engaged you. Um, um, I think another benefit as well is you're, you're having a much more strategic conversation, yes. which allows for a lot more of a commercial conversation at times, right? In order to get to best in class, mm -hmm. they, may, they maybe do need to upsell um, on a different product than from what they have. They maybe need to engage professional services, whether it's with you or one of the partners, mm -hmm. to actually get there. So that conversation, I think, is more open to you than when you're talking about support tickets. Um, I don't know about many of you guys, but we also get a number of questions from our customers on benchmarking. You know, every QBR, we got the questions of what else could I be doing? What are other people doing that I'm not doing? This is a great way to have that conversation without feeling like you're diverging, you know, diverging into some other customer. And, and giving away some secrets, mm -hmm. but you're talking about just the roadmap in general. So um, all of those put together make for a QBR that feels like you're having a vision and a strategic conversation and you're putting everyone on a roadmap. I like how you pointed out earlier, this is longer than renewal. This is that you guys have created a partnership with your customers to get them where they wanna go. Yeah, and I think the key here in what you said is Look, guys, the customer wants you to tell them 
what, how do they fare against other customers? And they want you to tell them what kind of vision they can have with you. And these tools do that exactly in a very nice visual way. So I'm, I'm gonna go into the next slide, uh, which is success plan. So we talked about the maturity model, right. right? Benchmarking against other clients without specifically mentioning any clients and divulging secrets of other clients. Tell me about the success plans. Um, how does your team use the success plans to promote customer accountability towards their success? Yeah, so I think the nice thing about success plans, and I have two slides that I'm gonna share with you that are specific examples from one of our products, but the nice thing about success plans is you just put a maturity model in front of them. Maybe you've mapped out with them where they stand and where they wanna go, and then there's a lot you could cover. And the maturity model allows you to have a conversation about how am I gonna stage this? How am I gonna phase uh, in the work? And allow you to pick an area to hone in on. So um, for those of you who have already, you know, memorized my previous, you know, very wordy <laughs> maturity slide, you'll recall uh, that there is objectives around innovation, around the team, around quality, around systems. Those map to the objectives we have here. You think about the overall outcome of the customer, and, and if you've created that maturity model that's, that's really comprehensive, you're able to map the objectives. So this is one of our products very much our customers will engage with us. They want a great customer experience. They want more revenue, we all do. And they want faster decision-making. And, and maybe they wanna leverage man plus machine um, outcomes. So we have um, laid out a number of objectives that the customers may have related to that. Maybe they wanna drive innovation. They want to have a more efficient team. And then internally, we think about what the barriers or capabilities are needed for that. What might be either from a product roadmap or what they have deployed a roadmap or, or sorry, a barrier that they need to really discuss with us on how are we going to break through those? Or maybe there are new capabilities that need to be built into the organization. This gives us kind of our blueprint for right. what's that next step, step in the maturity model. And I want to hone in on this uh, slide for just a second here, because you could see that, first of all, you know, if you have a complex solution, this slide is great because Bloomreach actually has five products. And then within that, you could see even from the maturity model that it could tailor these specific uh, visual, visual tools, if you will, or advanced QBR playbooks to address specific industries or specific products that they have. And I would encourage you that if you have a similar uh, type of solution that you offer that's, that changes based on the industry or changes because you have different products that you sell on the cloud, uh, this is a great example of how you can do that. The other thing I'm gonna point out in the slide is that we don't just um, outline the outcome overall and the objectives related to it, but we also socialize with the client what could be potential barriers for them, preventing them from executing either on the objective and the roadmap that's going to be laid down ahead, but also what might be the barriers that they currently have. And it's a great discussion point to say, you know, Mr. Customer, why aren't you just, you know, achieving these objectives without us? Right. And that creates an enrollment conversation around, yeah, you know what, actually I do need your solution in terms of, in order to get these new capabilities and uh, achieve these objectives. And I will submit to you that if you don't create that enrollment conversation and you don't have that question asked, um, then the client might actually not see the value or the critical value that you can bring to the table. So after you have discussed this with a client and you looked into different outcomes and what are the objectives that can support this overall outcome, <clears throat> What else do you do? Yeah, so the next slide goes through then with them, the tasks associated. What are we gonna do together? What is the customer potentially gonna do? What are we gonna do that actually will allow them to achieve those results? Whether it's breaking down the barriers, whether it's adding new capabilities that they can drive to each of those outcomes. And the thing I like about this when we're able to go through this with customers is you start talking about the objectives, you have clear things you can talk about each, um, each quarter on what's been accomplished that you still likely need to go through your KPIs with them. But this feels more like you've generated a result 
that they can stand up with the rest of the organization and say, this is what we've achieved. Mm -hmm. And it's an actual blueprint. It's very similar to me. It's very similar to what sometimes we give a playbook to a customer success manager. This time we're actually giving the playbook to the customer. We're telling them, look, if you like, take the first one, if you want to drive innovation through deployment of machine learning algorithms, then you need to do one, two, three, and four. That's right. And so you can have that conversation right off the bat before you even started working on a success plan to create the expectation. What is the level of effort that's going to be needing to take? And if they have any objections, let's do that at the QBR level before we write the success plan. And let's make sure that they're ready mentally and otherwise in order to execute on this roadmap. And so it's a great blueprint or a recipe or a cookbook, if you will. This is the cookbook. You know that slide I had with the cookbook? This is the cookbook. The cookbook is, look, look, Mr. Customer, in general, this is what we see our customers needing to do in order to achieve that outcome or objective in order to support that outcome. By the way, there might be like four different things that we need to work on in order to achieve the overall outcome. And these are the things that we need to do. So if they don't do now, like why is this customer accountability? Because if you said right off the bat that this is what it would take, you need to train, you need to share, you need to develop, you need to understand. If you don't do all these four things with us, you might not achieve the objective and thereby not achieve the outcome. And so it drives customer accountability by having you taking that extra level of effort to be explicit with your customer around what does it take? What does it take to be successful with you? And I will submit to you that if you start doing that, not only your customers are going to become more accountable, but they will be more cooperative. They'll give you more resources and they will make you a priority. Absolutely. The, the one other piece that I like about rolling this out is um, a lot of customers, there's so much possibility when they buy your software or your product. And that's where people can get lost. That's where, you know, I don't know where to start. I don't really know what's next um, and can lead you down a six month path of nothing's actually really happened other than turning the software on because there isn't a clear kind of roadmap. It's not structured conversation. And so this really allows for you to have that structured conversation and, and really like break off a chunk and say, we're just tackling this right now. Right. Um, Mathilde, we can stop for questions if there are any, or we can continue. What do you recommend? Sure. We do have a question specifically about the slide that we had before, so why don't we go and answer that. Um, question for Christy, Christy. and uh, I'm sure you, you have some recommendations as well. Do you uh, typically give your customer a list of uh, objectives to choose from, or do you ask the client to come up with these uh, themselves? Oh, good question. So if you start with the maturity model and they're picking kind of an area they want to focus in on, then typically tra we craft the outcome with them. So I don't give them a list to kind of pick from, but that maturity model almost does give you a list to pick from. Um, and depending on which, you know, there are, there are about five over to the left of kind of uh, you know, topics, whether I want to focus on innovation. You know, we have some customers who say, I, I want the best in class experience and be very innovative for my customers. And other customers we speak to say, you know, quality is of the utmost importance. We can't have any mistakes there. Those, um, those clues and tidbits that we've received through the sales cycle or we've received in that conversation, tell us what that outcome is and we'll craft that Typically, once we've crafted that from those conversations, the customer really just says, yeah, that's what I wanted. Um, very rarely do they end up editing it. It is pretty a high level statement. Um, it's, not, it's not a really granular statement. Mm -hmm. Any other awesome. questions? Um, yeah, building on top of this actually, um, when do you recommend getting the buy-in uh, from the customer uh, for these objectives during the sales cycle or at onboarding? Oh, that's a good question. It's so tricky because, <laughs> you know, ideally we'd love to get it during the sales cycle, but you also don't want to slow down your sales cycle. 
And so it's, it's very tricky on when you really want to um, deploy it. Ideally, you're having some of these conversations during the sales cycle, particularly around objectives. What do we really want to get out of this? Um, in that case, you may also be around an initial value demonstration. So you're not really creating a huge long vision and roadmap. Maybe you're really just trying to show that this can change the dynamic of the team at the customer or the customer. So um, in that case, you may want to keep it short in the sales cycle. Certainly during onboarding and then after first value demonstration, we really start to dig in with the customer. And we found that very early on, it's pretty, it's pretty tactical what you need to do. You need to stand up the product. Maybe you've got that one proof point. You've got to get in front of the customer. And so you're putting a lot of your energy against that and getting them that initial win. This is beyond that initial win. So you don't have to go through everything in great detail. So in other words, I think we're going to keep it short in the sales cycle, but focused on tactically getting first value delivered. I would submit to you that these advanced QBR playbooks are great for customers that are in the adoption phase. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so once they're in the adoption phase, let's say you're a new CSM and you've received a portfolio of customers, some of which have been with you for three or five years. How relevant do you think their initial sales goals are at this point? Mm -hmm. Probably not very because if they're a healthy business, their business is growing. If they're not a healthy business, then their priorities have changed. Either way, you have to double click on that. And so these kind of advanced playbooks allow you to have that kind of conversation. What changed this year, Mr. Customer? Hey, executive sponsor, what, what are your main priorities for the year? And like every other executives, they will have different strategic goals every year for themselves personally, for their team specifically, and certainly ones that tie back to the, the, comp the overall company goals. So it's very important for you as a CSM to really check that at least once a year, if not more. Awesome. Yeah, we did have some uh, questions about how to improve customer adoption, uh, which we could do an entire webinar about this specifically. Um, but that, awesome. that answers it. Uh, these specifically in QBRs are a great tool sure. for adoption. Awesome. Okay, so moving on, Christy, since your team started incorporating these into QBRs, what do you see the impact is on the clients as well as the CSM team? I mean, with the clients, I think there's a lot more clarity on what needs to be accomplished. Mm -hmm. um, there, the QBRs aren't necessarily this... Um, meeting where you go through these these graphs this data on how we're doing everyone absorbs the data hopefully mm -hmm. i mean i'd like to think that every qbr we have they absorb all the data but um you know it's not a that kind of let me come to you tell you everything we've done data driven wise and shake your hand it is about a partnership and so the QBRs mean a lot more conversation around, all right, well, what's working, not working? We have this vision for your, org for your organization, right? Mm -hmm. We have this digital experience we want your customers to have. Where are we better? Where are we not better as a team? Instead of you bought our product and we're constantly trying to prove to you that the product's working, that you're getting the right support, um, any of that, but it's a partnership for their product roadmap. Um, I also think that the CSMs, it's, it's just a lot more fun to prepare for. Yeah. You really kind of, I don't know about you guys, we hire very strategic CSMs, really smart people. They like to get in the room and brainstorm, how can we make this, this customer experience better? Going around and collecting data on whether our response time was sub, you know, 30 minutes on a support ticket or whatever it is, isn't necessarily, um, necessary at times, but it's not necessarily where you want everyone spending all of their time. Absolutely. Um, next question really is, did you incorporate these tools in your customer operations system uh, or any technology that your team is using? 
what was the goal? Why did you do that? And uh, what was the value that the team got by having success plans and possibly maturity uh, results in the system? And what was the value for you yeah. as a manager? So we did not at first, we have since. Mm -hmm. And I think that the reason you maybe don't want to immediately just embed it into your system is because mm -hmm. you have to iterate, right? You have to try it out, see what's working and not working. And there's a lot of data you do want to get into your system. Mm -hmm. However, the reason we opted to then build it into the system is you want it, you want it in where your CSMs are spending all their time. Mm -hmm. um, you don't want it in a slide deck that you revisit every quarter yeah. and then say, did we do all right. the things we said we were gonna do? Um, you want it right in front of them, constantly mm -hmm. going back. You want it the start of every account plan. You want it the start of every conversation. Mm -hmm. That's great. Um, any questions before we get on tips on how to get started building a maturity model or success plans or any of this, the slides that we shared? Um, I think uh, no. We'll keep we'll keep all of these questions for the Q and A. Let's keep going. Okay, awesome. Any tips on how to get started, Christy? Um, I know you've been thinking about this process. Obviously, you had a bunch of reiterations. If somebody in the audience wishes to get started quickly, what would you recommend? I I mean I think that you the best way to get your maturity model going is to have something that people can react to and give you feedback on. So I highly recommend blocking off an hour, sitting at your desk, picking one product, one vertical, and mapping out the maturity model. Mm -hmm. Just iterating on it for an hour yourself. Um, How are you thinking about, you know, what's a novice, what's best practices? Did you look at specific clients? Yeah, I mean, first, I think you want to think about what those rows are. Mm -hmm. Where is where are the conversations always happening? Are they happening at use cases? Are they happening at the fact that your CSM's team is telling you the teams aren't engaging in this particular segment or with this particular feature? Or for example, our customers are always coming back to us and saying, how do I feed more data in? How do I get more data into the system? Well, what kind of data is it? And then I did start with the first and the last one. Mm -hmm. Right. What is best in class? If I could have that customer that I was going to put on stage at every single conference, what's everything that they would be doing? Right. And then at the flip side, what is the very basic littlest thing you need to really get started with us? And then I went through each which of is the, the novice, which is the novice, the early stage um, customer. And then I went through and kind of wrote the various different stages based on customer examples. Mm -hmm. Could I write something in that cell that I could think of an example customer? In fact, the first iteration, I think there was a name in almost every, every cell that kind of mm -hmm. validated for me, this could work. I could talk to a customer about this. Mm -hmm. um, and, then we d and then we did an offsite with, with Arit, um, brought her in, had her work with our teams to really have an offsite on okay, is this a maturity model that's really gonna work with our customer base? And how would we translate that into success plans? Um, if you're gonna do a success plan based on outcomes, based on industry, based on product, you're gonna to wanna to divide your team into sub teams and have them try to take that first iteration and go tackle that to get yourself set up with a few success plans. It also led for a lot more team buy-in that this is something that they wanted to go do and go roll out, they had created it. So in other words, when you're ready to launch new processes and new playbooks and introduce those to your team, it's nice to have the team go through this process where they potentially have an impact on how the playbook looks like eventually. So you'd have that enrollment conversation with the team, you get the internal buy-in and therefore address some challenges that we typically see in what we call change management. Absolutely. Okay, um, so we're almost approaching the end of the, you know, what she was referring to us, you know, coming in and doing a workshop for her team is part of the CS Navigator program that customer, the CSM practice offers, where we work, we offer sort of like a management consulting services that are very agile, and it also serves as a great coaching opportunities for you and the team. We work on deliverables, so you, we typically engage with, your, with you and your team to produce these kind of templates 
as we're going through, and it, a lot of times it has some element of training or coaching to it. Um, if you want to learn more, go to our website, csmpractice.com. There's plenty of information there, or just submit a contact form, and we'll contact you and tell you more about it. Key takeaways from this uh, webinar, I hope you enjoyed it. It. I hope you learned a lot. Uh, use scoring modeling every QBR uh, to demonstrate where the client is in their journey to becoming a you know just better customer or better in comparison to other clients and following best practices and becoming best of breed. Follow up after the QBR with meeting notes as to what they said regarding the scoring model conversation. And that should hopefully materialize into a success plan that would be effective for them. Um, I highly recommend showing a list of business outcomes at least once a year. Obviously, like Christy said, you can't really show that every QBR, but every now and then when you have the right people in the room, it's a great discussion point to create that strategic uh, you know, partnership with your clients, establish a uh, trusted advisor relationship with him and elevate the conversation to what is strategically important for them and where are their highest priorities and align expectations for what is their accountability for their success. Create that roadmap. Your, client want, your clients want to know what is the roadmap. They want to know what else they can achieve with you and they want to know how they fare with against your other clients. Uh, so take that time to do that and develop these advanced playbooks. Uh, I hope you get lots of success. We're gonna stick around here for some questions and answers. Uh, Mathilde, please please share those. We're happy to, to address all of them. Awesome, cool. We already have some awesome, awesome. questions. So um, let's take an extra five minutes to, um, to answer as many as we can. So one good question here is uh, Rana is asking, saying very tactical and fun, foundational question. Uh, what's the ideal duration of a QBR if you want to cover these advanced components in it? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, you know, honestly, in my opinion, you're, you're not going to get more than an hour typically with your customers for a QBR. If you do, that's, that's fantastic. Um, you can ask for 90. We struggle to get more than 60. So we try to make sure that we're spending most of the QBR talking about their vision and roadmap and as little as possible on the things we can send in a report or that we can leave with them. Mm -hmm. So every month we can sit down and talk to them about any open support tickets or we can talk to them about the latest service project that they have and where are they in their data feed upgrade but the QBR is your chance to have an executive sponsor and the full team at the table. So use it for the discussion and the vision. Don't use it for something that you can hand them a report and say, and by the way, I'm happy to set up a follow-up call on these KPIs and this report looks great. We're super excited to continue working with you, but it, but it can be read offline. Awesome, great. Um, another question for you is, do you run your QBRs for every customer or only customers above a certain MRR? Yes, so we do because our customers are of the more strategic, larger size customers. So we don't have that, um, that tier where we would say above a certain MRR for sure. We would like to move to a different cadence, but for us in particular, we don't have, they, they all fit that threshold. So we do have a strategic and we do it four times a year. In other words, at Bloomreach, all clients are strategic clients. They don't have segmentation. Their clients are, you know, the, the solution warrants a high touch uh, engagement model. So that's very unique. If you have a different business model where you do have a lower MRR or ARR and you, you should or do get segmentize your customer success uh, or sorry, the customer base, what I would recommend is, you know, for your, it could be multiple tiers. There's the white glove where they pay you so much that you're probably on site almost every week or every month. There's a high touch where you're probably mostly remote and maybe visit them every six months to a year, which I encourage you to do. And then there's the on demand where you would mainly offer one to many uh, programs with an element of a high touch where needed. So you'll carve out the segment to say, 
okay, so in that on-demand segment, how many customers this quarter should I reach out personally? And those would be your the ones that need your help. And so in that regard, when you think about QBRs, obviously for white glove and for high touch customers above a certain ARR where it's actually productive to do so, you would do that every quarter. And for the on demand or lower, you would maybe do that once a year, uh, preferably on site if you can. It really depends on your business model. I would, I would say carefully assess the profitability of any kind of engagement that you decide to do and then think through, can I do the same you know, maturity model question, can I do a questionnaire for you know, the low touch or what we call on demand or our um, digital experience? Can I, can I supplement this experience digitally? so that everybody gets to understand how they fare against other clients and then if they scored in a certain way, can I feed them or nurture them in an email sequence? So there's ways to provide the same sort of customer experience in different levels. And if you don't know how to do that, again, would be more than happy to assist you in thinking through these kind of strategic uh, engagement models. Awesome, great. Um, we have multiple questions here about um, how, do you get customers interested uh, in a maturity model or doing QBRs or showing interest in collaboration on those objectives um, if they're not particularly engaged? And um, another attendee ha here added, um, that's true, especially if their attitude is, I am paying you to find a solution, so it's your problem. Um, do you have any tips on how to do that? Basically, the client refuses to be accountable. Exactly. So before you can even get them to the QER to show them that they should be accountable, how do you get their interest into doing that? Yeah, that, <laughs> that, that is tricky. Um, I wish we had a one size fits all answer to that. We usually in those cases, we will pull the full account team together and strategize. So it's not necessarily anymore about getting that QBR meeting and going through the maturity model, but it's about the full account context. So it's possible that the that your sales team already has discussions going on elsewhere in the organization um, about a different product, or they are gonna have coffee or touch point. And that's a great point for them to talk about the longer vision and the fact that there's some stuff we can do, there's some stuff we can't do, right? Our product only does what you feed into it. So how do we how do we get that engagement? Um, I have found that when we get the account team together, there's usually several leads, um, whether it's from the sales team or from maybe the previous CSM, if you've had to do a transition, that you can get in and that, get that conversation going. And customers are more likely to pick up the phone when you want to engage with them on um, a strategic conversation. We want to talk about where your product roadmap is going and where our product roadmap is going. That's almost always resulted in an answer to an email for us versus we really need to schedule this QBR. Did you ever pull in an executive alignment uh, playbook? For sure. I mean, executives on our side as well as the customer side. So maybe those day-to-day -day teams you're struggling to get in front of, but we can have our CEO reach out to their CEO or something like that. Those usually come out of the account meetings where we mm -hmm. get the full account team together and say, let's just whiteboard everything we could do to get this out of um, limited conversation mode and into a partnership. So when you say the account team, that includes your AE, who I assume is responsible for the expansion in the account, your CSMs, who else is, is We also there? pull in the leads for the regions. So mm -hmm. we'll pull in the directors for the sales region, mm -hmm. for the CSM region. Um, we pull in the SC, our solution consultants, if they were involved in scoping out any of the work, if we're maybe still, you know, in the first year, we'll pull that in. And, and then, you know, honestly, we'll pull in an executive team member at Bloomreach if they have relationships at that account. Right. And I've heard that happens quite a few often. So there's a bunch of above the line playbooks that you could potentially apply if you feel like the customer is not really understanding the vision in talking about the vision. Um, and sometimes that would include reaching out at the executive level. So executive peer relationships start to develop, bringing your peer executive to an on-site meeting 
uh, that would typically pull the right resources into the uh, QBR session or and you can elevate the name of the session to an executive business review to get the right people in the room. And also getting potentially, if you have a business advisory, uh, inviting that executive into your advisory board so that um, they can be more um, actively engaged in the roadmap and, and getting that sense of shared responsibility. So there's a bunch of things that you can do. I don't necessarily say that you need to pull all the levers at the same time, but certainly I think starting with having that conversation with your entire account team is a good place to start. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, we are at the end of the hour, so we actually have to wrap up. We have so many questions. If we didn't answer your question, um, apologies, but thank you so much to everyone that's been so active in the Q&A and in the chat, and so many people were able to join us today. So really awesome. Really awesome. And uh, Irit and Christy, thank you so, so much for sharing all of that knowledge with us. Uh, Christy, it was awesome to hear uh, what you're up to at Bloom Reach and, and super insightful. So Irit, I'll let you uh, wrap up. Maybe you have some um, contact information or anything like that if you want people to reach out to you. Yeah. I, sorry we didn't have enough time to address all the questions. Feel free to either contact me on you know the website csmpractice.com forward slash contact uh, dash us or you know I'm on Twitter all the time. If you ping me on Twitter, I will address your questions. And also, of course, uh, Christy is on Twitter as well, and she's tagged in all the promotionals for this <laughs> webinar. So I'm sure you can find her fairly quickly. I want to thank you for your time today. Have a fabulous uh, day. Awesome QBRs and many many successful customers. Awesome. Thank you so much, Yuri. Thanks so much, everyone. Uh, we'll talk to all of you soon, and we'll be sending the recording very shortly as well. All right. Bye, guys. Awesome. Bye. Have a good day, everyone. Thank you.